And welcome back to Turdfurg Show. Today's video is actually about a projectile being fired at 10 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees. How high up would it strike a wall 20 meters away? All right, so this is a pretty good question. So let's go ahead and draw in our projectile. So somebody has shot a projectile. I don't know what it is, a stone, a football, a bullet. But either way, it's being shot at a wall. And it tells us in this video that the wall is actually 20 meters away. So that's actually good information to know. And it's wanting to know how high up the wall, why does it strike, does it actually strike the wall? So that's what it's actually trying to get us to figure out here. Now it tells us something very handy. It tells us, I'm going to switch to red, it tells us that the in initial velocity, see so if I can draw that a little bit neater, tells us that the initial velocity of the projectile is 10 meters per second. It also tells us that the projectile is shot at an angle of 45 degrees. Now instantly somebody might be thinking this is supposed to be a hard problem, but I know that it's not a hard problem. The reason why is because of what I just read. Anytime a projectile gives you VO and it gives you an angle, I know it's not a hard problem. So let's kind of get into this a little bit about why that this is not a hard problem. So let's go ahead and do something. Let's find, and I always say to do this with any projectile, find VOX and VOY if you are able to. So find VOX and VOY. Now VOX is equal to VO cosine of theta, which in this case it gave us both those things, 10 cosine of 45, and this is where most people would probably pull their calculator out. It's just that I happen to know that the cosine of 45 is 7.0 or 0.707, it's a very common thing to take a cosine of, times that by 10, and we've got a velocity of 7.07 meters per second. Now what's neat is VOY is actually VO sine of theta, but I'm going to save myself a little bit of time, and that's what the author of this question meant. They wanted you to save time too, because if you know anything about 45 degree triangle, that means that VOX and VOY are both the same thing. They're both 7.5. 07 for that reason. So that actually kind of simplifies things for us just a little bit here. So I'm kind of thankful for that. Now we've got VOX, VOY. Now look, it gave us an X. And what's cool is there is only one equation good for X in a projectile. We've been over this with some other videos. But X is equal to VOXT. And that is our one equation for X in a projectile. Well, check it out. We already know X. We know VOX, which means we can find T pretty easily. So X is 20. VOX is 7.07T. And now all we'll do is divide both sides by 7.07. Now, what's actually kind of cool here is that uh, I do not have my good calculator, so I'm going to go with this guy. And so 20 divided by 7.07, .07, and my calculator says 2.83 seconds. Thank you, Windows calculator. So now I know that my time is 2.83 seconds. Now that's great, but you may be looking at this now going, but wait a second, it asks you to find how high. Well, that's really no problem either, because it asked me to find height, and I have a great equation for finding y. y would be equal to v o y t plus one half a t square. And what's cool is we already know v o y. V o y we found the second ago. It's seven point o seven. We know that our time is two point eight three. We just found that. And now a neat little uh, trivial fact here. One half of A. Well, what's cool is in this question, 
what is our A? Well, in this problem that we're working, our A is actually it's free fall. It's negative 9.8. So there is our free fall in this question. So I'm going to go ahead and do something. Half of negative 9.8 means we've got minus 4.9 t squared, which would be 2.83. Uh, start plugging this in the calculator. This comes out to 19.9 minus, uh, work all this out. It roughly comes out to 40 when you type that in the calculator. And now we're actually about to see something kind of weird. We get an answer. Check this out. Y equals negative 20. See if I can write that a little bit neater. Sorry, I've got a brand new uh, digital pen here. It's a little hard for me to get used to using. But Y equals negative 20.1 meters. So there is my answer. But this should be like screaming at you. A y of negative 20.1, what in the world, what is that telling us? It tells us that this is actually a bad problem. But sometimes we can even learn things from bad problems. So in this case, the problem told us we had a wall that was 20 meters away from a projectile being shot in an angle of 10 and, and or excuse me, at 10 and at 45 degrees. My handwriting is atrocious here. But look at this. It tells me that y is negative 20.1. That means this wall is very safe. Because what's going to happen is this projectile is actually going to go up and it will have already have hit the ground. It will have already have hit the ground long before it gets to the wall. That's what this negative 20.1 is meaning. It means the projectile will already have hit the ground and will not even get near this wall. Uh, matter of fact, what would be neat is we could actually do a, we could do a range on this. If you know it, the range equation is VO square sine to theta over G. So let's just take a second and do something. Uh, VO was 10, so that would be 10 squared. Sine of 2 theta, sine of 2 theta would be 90 degrees. And let's just use a G of, just for curiosity, we'll just say that G is 10. So check this out. That would be 100 times 1 over 10. Sine of 90 is 1. This projectile could only go 10 meters, which means there was no chance for it to ever hit a wall 20 meters away. So, but like I said, what's cool, you can learn even from a bad problem. But anyway, thank you for watching the Turdford Show, and I'm going to draw you a little heart because, as always, Turdford loves you. Maybe a little smiley face. Anyway, bye.